geography is preservation destiny. So the climate that nature provides for where your institution is uh, is one of the largest factors in determining what sort of climate your collections will experience. Then you have them in some sort of building, and very often those buildings have quite complicated mechanical systems, what we call HVAC systems. And it's useful for anyone that's approaching this task from the preservation point of view to understand a little bit of the basic functioning of HVAC and mechanical systems. While those of us who are concerned with preservation don't need to know uh, all of the fine points, we don't need to know everything that the building operator needs to know, but we do have to have a general idea of what these systems are and how they operate. The air that's inside buildings comes from outside, and the purpose of the systems are to modify the outdoor conditions, modify the outdoor air, to make it suitable for use indoors. Fundamentally, their purpose is to move a column of air uh, around in a loop, a loop that passes through ducts to the spaces, mixes with the air in the spaces, and then is withdrawn back again to usually a large uh, machine called an air handler, where there are cooling coils, heating coils, humidifiers, and dehumidifiers. And all of those are energy-consuming devices. And that's where you begin to consider the sustainability issues. Can you get a good environment without, uh, without spending any more effort, doing any more work on the air, and therefore consuming any more energy than you really need to? My name is Jeff Anderson, HVAC Tech 1, Level 1 for, uh, for RIT. Take care of about 14 to 15 buildings on the campus. We have to provide a certain amount of fresh air to the building as a whole. If you don't, you start to get building sickness. So you have a certain amount of outside air at all times. It's generally 20% of the air handler's air is actually outside air. The greater the difference between the conditions you desire for the indoor air, especially surrounding collections, and the natural climate, the more work has to be done on the air. The systems are put in for design days. When we fall out of those design days where we have high temperatures and high humidity, systems are not going to keep up. So if you have something that requires a tight parameter, you generally need to have some type of secondary system. I go to Air Handler 19 and see how Air Handler 19 is doing. I'm going to see that it's bringing in 85 degree outside air. The chill water coil is 100% open. We're discharging 60 degree air right now. So right now we're taking 25 degrees out of the airstream and that's it's doing its job. If this is doing everything it can and the Liebert's doing everything it can and we're not maintaining specs, it's generally because, like I was saying earlier, um, you need secondary equipment. It's easy to see by overlaying graphs, for example, of temperature when you're heating the air or cooling it. Uh, relative to the outside. By overlaying graphs of dew point, which is the moisture content of air, it's easy to see when you're humidifying the outdoor air or when you are dehumidifying it. What we need to know is what we desire for the collections and on the other hand what the conditions actually are. That kind of analysis it forms the basis for a lot of useful discussions between uh, uh, preservation and conservation staff and facilities management staff. My name is uh, Antonella Bonfanti. I'm a curatorial assistant here in the motion picture department. I'm currently acting vault, safety vault manager. The way that I feel that system works here is that you have somebody who's responsible every day to go and look at the levels and, mm -hmm. and if there's a problem immediately communicate that to their superior which is the curator. And The curator of course understands the importance of maintaining that. So if they deem it important to have a certain temperature, then that temperature needs to be maintained, right? So um, as they have a position of authority in the museum, they go ahead and take that information to the people responsible for um, the, ma the maintenance, mm -hmm. and then that's how the, that's the way the line of communication is open, at least between the person who's doing the daily monitoring and the person who's actually going to be able to fix the problem. Mm -hmm. The people who create the environment their job is to, is to deliver an environment to specifications. It's quite a different task for the preservation and conservation uh, function. It turns out that the, the, the preservation function, in practice, needs to collect its own data 
because it needs to have a continuous, complete record. And it also needs to be in a form that they can then directly feed into their own kinds of analysis. That's critical to being able to say we are effectively managing the storage environment in this institution.